Hi everyone, welcome back. I want to share this tutorial with you because um, I think I made kind of a breakthrough. Uh, this decentralized application that we created for the Simple Storage uh, Smart Contract uh, that I showed a few videos ago is 90% in Python using Dash. And I'm, I'm proud of this fact because there's I couldn't find out there on the web any information on how to create decentralized applications in Python. It's almost all of it is in JavaScript and, and React. And I was able to create this decentralized application for the smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain with night with Dash, 90% of the code being Python, and only like 10% being an injection of JavaScript uh, for for this function right here. And I'll explain why in a second. Um, and and this, I'm just excited about this because I love creating uh, 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 front-end user interfaces in Python. I don't need to learn all of the JavaScript and React code needed. And, and, and now you can do it. Before I show you the code and go over this and explain how I'm doing this, um, I really recommend you watch this video if you don't know Dash. This is the first time you're hearing about Plotly Dash. Watch the video above me to get a better understanding of what what a callback is, what the layout is, uh, and what Dash is, uh, because it will be a lot easier for you to follow along if if you understand what Dash is. Okay, so this code right here that I'm going to use and go over uh, is on my GitHub right here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to share this link under the video. Feel free to click it and then you can copy the whole thing like this and just do get clone this and you'll be able to clone the whole repo, uh, install the requirements, all these libraries, and, um, and then you'll be able to uh, run this app on your browser. Uh, if you want to do that, that will also make it easier for you to follow along, but you don't have to. Okay, now uh, this um, application and code is built on top of the simple storage uh, smart contract, which is right here. I'm going to send you the code also under the under the video, um, and uh, it basically has two functions: get sentence and set sentence. You want the user to be able to get the latest sentence or string that was stored on the Ethereum blockchain, the Sepolia network, test network. And you want to allow the user to set sentence right here um, of, 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 their, of their choice, right? Um, and um, these two functions uh, are using Python and JavaScript. This one is using Python, web3.py to be more exact. Let's refresh, connect to our, it automatically asked me to connect to MetaMask. I'm going to get the password, connect to MetaMask. And now if I click the retrieve button, this is all in Python. I retrieve the la latest sentence of, uh, from the blockchain. And this is where I actually insert the latest sentence. And this little part right here is using the client side callback, the JavaScript. I'll go over this a little bit later, but let's, Put a sentence here. My cat is now 11 years old. Submit. I'm going to ask automatically for authorization from the user's wallet. Assuming this is a user using my app, it's loading. You can actually even inspect it if you want as a user. You go to console. You see the transaction was created. A transaction was signed and sent, and we're waiting for this transaction to be uh, approved inside the blockchain, transactional, transaction successful, and you would know it's successful because now you can click on this button and retrieve the new sentence where your cat is 11 years old. So what's cool about this decentralized application, anybody on the web can use it. Uh, anybody that has a MetaMask wallet or digital uh, wallet can actually use this application, 90% of which was built in Python. All right, so let's see the code. Go into the code here. You'll see here that um, we're importing all the libraries that we installed with the require within the requirements.txt file. So we're importing these libraries, and um, 
then we are instantiating uh, the Dash app. We're going to use some bootstrap, so it looks kind of cool, the background in black, the buttons in blue. And we need to include this external script, and this comes from our JS file that we created right here, signer info, inside a static folder. We'll go over this in a, in a bit when we talk about the client side callback. And then we have our app layout, right? Let's go into the app layout here. Our app layout, you can see, we have uh, the title, H1, we have uh, the input field right here, whatever we choose to put in there is the value of the input, the submit button, another H3 title, the DBC button to retrieve data, and then an empty children where we will put the retrieve data from the blockchain. Now we have this alert, as you saw above here, remember you saw successful transaction, um, is what is triggered whenever uh, the uh, when, after somebody clicks on submit right so we'll do this submit let's reject this transaction and you'll see unsuc transaction unsuccessful with the color red so all this we do with um, the client side callback but I'll show you that uh, a bit later first we're going to go over the retrieve button function and this is the from line 50 so let's look at line 50 this callback we're taking the end clicks of the get data. Now the end clicks of the get data, the get data is a button. And we know this because here's get data. And we'll take the end clicks, which is beginning is zero. And as soon as somebody clicks on it, as soon as a user clicks on it, end clicks will be equal to one. And, uh, and then the uh, callback will be triggered, right? So I clicked on retrieve and I'm triggering the callback. And let's see what happens here. Here, I'm connecting to a, um, a quick node a URL. This is URL that I created for the HTTP provider on, on quick node. This is mine. Uh, so if you want to create one of your own, uh, just make sure to um, go to watch this video above me. I, I show in a quick, not a thing like two, three minutes, how to create your own quick node URL. We connect to Web3, which we will call Web3 at W3. And then we have to create an instance of our contract. Before we connect to certain functions within our contract, remember we have like two different functions here, we need to create an instance of the contract. So the instance of the contract, we will need the address of the contract and the ABI. And this is here in uh, the link that is under the video, you can find um, you can find the address of the of the contract right here. Copy this, and you can find the ABI right here. A lot of contracts have this information um, uh, publicly available, especially the the address. So we have these two. We create an instance of the contract, and then now that we have an instance, we can call uh, certain function any function we want from the smart contract. Um, so we're going to call this function right here called get sentence. See the smart contract, get sentence, and this is just pulling data from. It's going to return the latest sentence from the blockchain. It actually returns this stored sentence, which is, um, which is the state variable of our simple storage smart contract, right? So it's the latest sentence on the smart contract, and I'm going to. This is a string. I'm going to. Spit it out as a string. I'm going to return this to the children property of the placeholder. So this is returned right here, which is this HTML div right under the button. So whenever that's why, if I click on refresh and I retrieve, it returns the latest sentence right under the button, the children of under the button. So we didn't need JavaScript in this case because we're just pulling data from the database from from the blockchain, and you don't need a digital wallet for that. You don't need a signer. You're just pulling data, just like you can do with um, uh, events. You can also uh, with Web3. You don't need uh, any JavaScript for that. It's all in Web3.py. So cool. Everything up to here: the interface, user interface, pulling information from the blockchain, the buttons. Everything was in Python. Now the the only case we're going to need um, JavaScript here is when we insert data into the database. Because here, we're inserting a string onto the Ethereum blockchain, and that requires uh, 
access to the user's wallet and authorization from the wallet to actually spend the gas and and create that sign that transaction and because uh, the digital wallet is on the browser um, the only language that I know of right now uh, is, is JavaScript that can do this well at least not Python so to do that with JavaScript we need to work with the client-side callback instead of the regular callback so let's look at the client-side callback that is executing this this part right here first of all uh, we want to create a framework like the structure of the callback we'll say we'll have two arguments input arguments one will be n clicks and one will be value and as you know only m uh, input is the one that triggers uh, a callback and this will be the n clicks uh, so whenever n clicks of submit button which is this button so whenever this button is clicked the callback will be triggered it's also going to take the value of the insert data. Insert data ID is the ID of this input field. So it's going to take the value of whatever is in here. So see, um, ice cream. If we write ice cream, then this is going to be the value of ice cream right here, right? Because so we've taken that value. So now we clicked on the button uh, and the callback is triggered. And inside the callback, we see that we have an async function. In JavaScript that's taking two arguments because we do have two arguments so we put these two arguments here and then we do a try catch um, method where we await the send transaction value now where is this send transaction coming from this send transaction is a function that exists inside our signer info.js right here right we have our signer info. This exists inside the static folder. Now, remember, you're going to have to create the static folder inside your root directory. Spell it correctly. And then you can call this file whatever you want. I, I call it signer info. And here we're importing the ethers, ethers module from uh, this JS file. We are um, taking the address again of the smart contract, the ABI information of the smart contract, which remember you could find here at the very bottom, the ABI. We're taking all that information and uh, we're creating, we're connecting to a Web3 provider. And then we are uh, requesting access to the uh, smart wallet, right? That is uh, MetaMask. And then we get the signer information. Now this probably includes all the smart contract, the, 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 MetaMask wallet, my, I don't know, private key and information that, that we need to approve a transaction. So we get the signer information and we got their um, approval to use their wallet. And now we just create a new instance of the contract, right? Just like we did in the provider, remember? Right here. We created remember right here we create a new instance of the contract in the callback to retrieve the data so again here we're, we're doing another function uh, so we're going to create an instance of the contract in the signer info.js and then we'll uh, we'll create this send transaction message now this send transaction message is what we are referring to inside our uh, client side callback and this send transaction message is all it's doing is um, uh, now that we have our contract instance we can populate the transaction with any function that we have in our small contract in this case we're going to call the set sentence uh, function as you can see here smart contract we have a set sentence function right so we're going to call this function and we're going to pass one argument because this set set sentence only takes one argument we'll pass it in there and then we'll create some, we'll print out some uh, transaction created logs, and then we're going to um, sign this transaction, this unsigned transaction. We're going to sign it with the the, the, the user's uh, digital wallet information signer, and then we uh, wait for the transaction to to be processed. And at the very end, we close this function, and then we Make sure that the send transaction um, is exposed to the client side callback with window.send transaction. 
So this will allow us to access this transaction via the client side callback right here. So remember, we have to pass this value because this value is a value from the input and this value is going to be the, the message that we in, uh, insert into the sent, said, said sentence transaction. So we insert this, we execute this uh, function, and then uh, we, if there's no errors, we return five different objects. And these five objects are returned to the five outputs in the same order, right? So let's go here, right here. And you'll see that the order is first the submit button. We're going to um, the disabled property. We're going to say false. And that's because we have a callback under here that we did not mention before that, um, that makes the, the function disabled true. It makes the function, the, 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 the button disabled as soon as we click on this button. Right? The, the only purpose of this callback is to whenever this button is clicked to immediately disable it and change the children to loading you can see right here oops let me refresh got to connect to our metamask let's put ice cream so as soon as i click submit in this regular callback it will become uh, shaded out because it's disabled and the children will be loading right so it's going to be loading now in this case, it's, it's still asking for the MetaMask confirmation in order to execute this send transaction function right here. Uh, so let's give it the permission, confirm. And now when this is done, transaction takes a few seconds to be processed on the blockchain, um, then we're gonna return these five, five objects, right? One is the button disabled false, no longer disable it, change the children to submit. So now you'll see here it changes to submit. Um, and then open the alert. There's alert, you see open, transaction successful and green. See, true is going to be, is open true, the TX alert. This is our alert, right? So is open starts as false, but it's going to be true. And then the children of the alert will be transaction successful and then the color will be green, which is it's also called success in, in Dash Blue Chef components. And that's it. If the, if the function fails, if let's say we did submit and we say reject, or maybe we didn't have enough gas money and we do re or reject, it will send transaction unsuccessful in the color red. Um, and that's why you would return these five objects if the transaction failed right here. So I hope you learned a lot. I know this goes a little bit into the weeds of what, um, uh, how to interact with the blockchain and how to use a little bit of JavaScript for that. Uh, but again, like 85% of this uh, decentralized application is in Python, which I'm very excited about. And um, I plan to make more videos of this, of this type to show you how to interact with the blockchain and uh, Plotly and Dash. If you have any questions, under the comments. If you enjoyed or learned a lot from this video, don't forget to like it, spread the word, spread the love, and um, always remember we are better together, so help each other out.